Welcome to the Rex Andrews Show. Glad to have you. If you're a first-time listener, welcome to the program and welcome to the conversation. Glad to have you. Glad you found us. You know, it's exciting that we have you on board today because there's over 2.4 million active podcasts with over 100 million episodes in the marketplace. So we're glad to have you with us. For those who are returning, we have a great thank you to you to share. Thanks to you and our great guests like the one I have today. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing podcasts out there. We're, we forget to stop on the, the numbers anymore because it changes every day. However, we have listeners in 32 countries across six continents. And if I could figure out a way to market to penguins and then more importantly, help them recharge their cell phones, we probably would have uh, listeners in that last continent in Antarctica. Uh, today, I do want to um, welcome to the show some new listeners in Dubai. I uh, had some... Uh, Saw in the stats today, new listeners in Dubai. So we add another city that gets us over 470 some. So uh, it's fun to be connecting with people all over the globe. All right, so one last uh, home um, housekeeping item to uh, talk about real fast is uh, don't forget to stop by the rexandrewshow.com. And here's why. When we talk to our guests each week or each time that we have an interview, we only get to talk about just a few items in their life. And the this, this show is about human stories. And so if you go there, there are bios about our guests, links to their social media, links to their businesses, you know, the things they're up to. So we always have interesting people. And so we don't always have time to cover all of that. So please stop by the show website. It's rexandrewshow.com. You can always find us anywhere podcasts are distributed. Uh, we think we've got them all covered. And then always on any of the social media platforms. Okay. Let's get on with it today. I'm excited to have this uh, guest with us today. Um, he's done some interesting things and some interesting uh, projects he's working on. And uh, let me introduce him. And so most importantly, and I like a lot of this because of uh, those who follow the show, they know I'm a, a father of five. This guy's got me beat. He's a father of six. And so obviously he's an, also an amazing husband too. Um, he's an entrepreneur and in fact, such an entrepreneur that uh, he retired the first time at age 32. So we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the things he's done there. Um, he's a coach. He helps a lot of people there. And he uh, helps people and business people uh, on a year-round basis. So, you know, 12 months at a time. So he does some really interesting things there. But this one is also a, a, a category I think is interesting. He's a bike enthusiast. And not just on his own, he's... Uh, drug his kids with him all over the place. And so he's got thousands of miles under his belt doing that. So I'd like to welcome to the show today, Dale Majors. Dale, how are you? Thank you, Rex. It's good to be here. Thank you. Good to have you. Now, what part of the world are you dialing in from today? I am in Farmington, Utah. Farmington, Utah. What a great plus spot. Not far from Lagoon, right? The big infamous you, you Lagoon. Can see Lagoon, yeah. That's right. And people don't know what Lagoon is. Look it up by Google, but Lagoon is not a piece of water. It's the best water. It's the best amusement park in Utah. All right. So Dale, as you know, the show's about people's stories and success does not fall out of the sky. Um, now this last summer, I had uh, parts of a United Airline engine fall out of the sky about three blocks from my house. So, but uh, success doesn't hit us like that. So we want to know your story. So this is a long list and don't worry, I'll update it on. You don't have to write it down. I'll just lead you through these questions, but okay. I wanna know where you were born and then where you grew up because those are often different things. Mm -hmm. I had uh, one guest that uh, by, the, by the time she was 15 moved 63 times. Um, we wanna know, did you have siblings? Okay, did you have siblings that survived your harassment? And you know, cause we all know family dynamics. We would like to know what you were interested in as a kid. So did you play sports or were you into computers or were you into music or drama or heck even shoplifting? And I had a guest who by the age of 15 was a car thief. So uh, we'll know about your youth. We wanna know what your parents did growing up, okay? Uh, parental influence is amazing. Um, it contributes a lot to who we are today. You know, they say that the decade of definition is the 20s, but I don't think so. I think it begins about age six or seven, to be honest with you. So parental influence can be very supportive. It can be neutral, or it can be, wow, that's an example that I don't want to have anything to do with. I want to be completely different than, than my, my growing up with my parents. 
Then we'll hopscotch around a little bit on your education and then some pivot points in your life. Uh, talk about some of your successes, things you're up to today, and just get the full story on Dale. So Dale, if you could, where were you born? Yes, <clears throat> I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. And I'm the fourth of nine kids. Oh my and goodness. That, that's where I grew up. So yeah, there were uh, five boys and four girls. Wow. And um, I, I was just counting through it again. Yeah, five boys and four girls. And, uh, you know, we, I grew up, you know, I lived in, in Salt Lake and West Salt Lake until I was 19. And uh, yeah, as far as hobbies, when I was a kid, I loved collecting things. Okay. Um, you know, whether it was, I think my first collection was probably pennies. Okay. And then, or marbles and then micro machines and coins and baseball cards and pogs. And I really loved collecting things. But then later on, I got into uh, riding BMX bikes and rollerblading, uh, okay. rollerblading. So I always, um, we actually in seventh grade, I built a half pipe. Uh, it was nine, well, what, 12 feet wide, eight feet high and 34 feet long. Wow. And that was like a summer project. I lived on my rollerblades and I really gave very little thought to what I was going to do when I grew up professionally. I never loved, I never loved school. I was always fine in school, you know, kind of a B sure. student. And then um, my dad was a sales manager for a material handling company. So okay. he would drive to, he'd drive to Idaho once or twice a month and sell um, big feed bins and conveyors and grain processors, right? Okay. And I figured, you know, that'd be cool. Cause then I could go out of town, stay in hotels, go to movies, buy donuts and drive with, you know, snacks. I'm like, I'll just be a traveling salesman. Check that off the <laughs> list. I didn't really give any other thought to what I was going to do, you know, when I grew up, um, even through high school. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, really good parents. My mom stayed at home with the kids and she was a you know, she, she did have a part-time job at a gymnasium, the Deseret Gym in Salt Lake. Yep. Um, she taught gymnastics and then she would just, and then once the gymnastics program closed, she cleaned. And so the family could still have their, their pass and go live at the gym. So I spent a lot of time at the gym, you know, jumping off the diving board and playing racquetball and running around the track and just bumming around. Nice. Um, yeah, it was awesome. And then, you know, my dad had a good job as, you know, doing sales for this little family company, made $60,000 a year with nine kids, um, enough to go to Disneyland once a year. Right. You know, but we weren't necessarily going school clothes shopping every year or, sure. but, but a really good upbringing, um, very, you know, faithful family. They take us to church every week and just really good parents. Fantastic. Um, and because there were nine kids, there wasn't really enough time to micromanage yeah. individuals, you know? So <laughs> it wasn't, you know, we didn't have, you know, when I was 10 years old, you know, we would ride our bikes downtown to downtown Salt Lake and up the Canyon. And we would adventure and explore a lot, uh, which was really, which was really awesome. Fantastic. You know, it's kind of a dynamic you see with um, very large families like that. You know, I've interviewed, you know, a ton, a ton of people. And even back when I did my radio show, um, when you have families that big, unless you're just making killer money, um, resources are always tight. But yeah. yet the relationships with the siblings are, are really good, you know, solid families and stuff. So a little bit of a trade off there and stuff like that, because, uh, you know, it's not all about money, but also too, like you said, yeah, you probably didn't do a whole lot of shopping for new things all the time. So that's great. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you weren't like the over the top student type of thing. You weren't really planning some career. What was your next hop once you finished high school? The, <coughs> so I, oh, I got into wrestling in high school. Okay. Loved wrestling. Loved wrestling. Okay. That was like my. <clears throat> that was my uh, obsession in high school, okay. you know, instead of school, it's kind of wrestling. And I was, you know, I weigh 150 pounds now. My senior year, I was 114 and I cut down to 103. So I, I wrestled 103 pounds every, Ooh. every 
year. And then, so I think within two months of high school, I, I gained 25 pounds. I think I gained, I think I weighed 135 within a few months of weighing 103 pounds, which oh my was goodness. crazy. You yeah. know, I think I got like 3.6% body fat. I was one of two kids that the coach made go and get like, go see the physical therapist and get, you know, submersed in water to get the actual body fat. Yeah. Uh, right. Every week I'd have to lose five, six, seven pounds in a day. And it was horrible, <laughs> but really cool from like a, just hard work, you know, the values today, it taught really good values Yeah. and a lot of like, Hey, if it's up to be, you know, if it's to be, it's up to me, kind of like you can control anything. If you can lose seven pounds in a day, then you can pretty much do anything else. Cause that's really hard. Yeah. No kidding. There's a lot of, I actually did last year. I did a seven day water fast, which was very reminiscent of, you know, the days of going without, of, of going to bed, you know, working out four hours, not drinking water, and then going to bed, knowing that you couldn't have anything for the next 18 hours was pretty discouraging. Yeah, or no it, it was just heavy. You know, you didn't take it as discouraging, but it was just heavy. It was a heavy emotion, right? Right. So that was really formational for me. My brothers and I wrestled. And then I actually, I was a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Portugal. In Portugal, so okay. After, you know, after high school, I lived in Portugal for two years. And, and my career kind of started before that, buying and selling things on eBay. So, you know, in high school, I had a job as a janitor. Mm-hmm. And then I used that money, about $60 a week, to buy salvaged freight that I in turn would sell. Uh, I saw other people go to the store. I've always loved to shop. I love stores. I love commerce. You know, I, I sold candy as a kid. I always loved that whole experience of, of buying and selling things. And, and I found this store that sold a lot of really inexpensive stuff. This was in 1999, mm-hmm. and really inexpensive things. So I, well, I was a junior in high school, sophomore, junior. And there were people that I saw there every day and I found out what they were doing. And it turned out they were buying and selling things um, on eBay and on like bike forums. So sure. I started buying things, posting them on forums like mountain bike review site, mtbr.com. And then people would send me a check money order in the mail. I would send out their part. I was tripling my money. And that's actually how I saved about $10,000 to live in Portugal for two years. Fantastic. No, that's great. I remember a lot of people doing that back in the early days of eBay, you know, going out and literally scouring Craigslist and, and um, yard sales and all kinds of things, buying certain types of inventory. I also had a friend in college who did that with cars. He, he knew Hondas. And so he would just go buy, he would go through the private listings and he would go nickel and dime people down on, on these Hondas. He, he had a commercial account with a, bo- a, a body repair and um, paint shop. And then he just flipped cars and he made a killing. I mean, back in the days, gosh, you know, I'm 55. This was college time. So this was like 30 some years ago. He was making four or $5,000 a month just doing stuff like that. So flipping things, it mm-hmm. sounds like you were, you figured that out pretty early. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So you went away over to Portugal for two years. Uh, yeah. I, I know a lot about those LDS mission guys. Uh, it's, that is a refining uh, task to go live in a foreign country and a non- native language and talk about one of the most difficult things in the world, uh, religion. Yeah. Uh, how that, what did you learn? I mean, looking back over that experience. You know, well, a lot. It was interesting because the culture in our mission, right? The area, the geographical area that we were assigned to is called a mission, right? And we were in the north of Portugal. And mm-hmm. the guy that was leading our mission, his name was Ulysses Suarez, um, who's the church, a leader in our church. And uh, the culture that he created in the mission was that you didn't speak English, that you spoke Portuguese all the time. Okay. So I probably spent two hours speaking English in two years total, like ever, wow. and pr- probably only half an hour. And then whatever I spent with my family, you know, on the phone was the rest of the time. We just didn't speak English for two years. Wow. That's a, that's a great strategy, though, because you're immersed in the language. It was amazing. I learned, I learned to speak Portuguese really well. And, okay. um, and it was awesome. And it's kind of, it kicked off a love for learning language. Um, 
you know, I've been for about seven years, I've been uh, six years, I've been studying French and Spanish is really close. So, you know, study a little Spanish. Yeah, I love languages. Um, you know, and also as far as just dealing with people, um, it was really cool to, uh, yeah, talking about religion is hard. Mm-hmm. And especially when you're going out unsolicited, you know, knocking on doors, meeting people outside and talking to people, um, you just learn a lot about um, other people and, and how everybody's pretty much the same. Everybody wants a lot of the same things. You know, there's a lot of good people everywhere. Sure. And um, I think, I think one of the things that taught me is to just be kind to other people too. You know, everybody's, you know, I'm, I'm really nice to salespeople, even, even, you know, if I ever accidentally answer someone that's calling me on the phone, I'll be like, Hey, you know, sorry, I'm not interested in this, but I really hope that you have a good one. You know? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way when someone follows up hard and, you know, and they're doing the follow up and that kind of stuff. And just like that, if I have no interest, I'll still congratulate them and thank them, thank them for their efforts because I know how hard it is for yeah. that. So yeah, absolutely. I, I love to do that. And you get almost astonished reactions to it because who in a sales or an unsolicited situation gets that kind of feedback? I mean, it's like, well, thank you for, for harassing me. Well, yeah, why not? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I think it makes you really uh, just more understanding of other people. Yeah. So let me ask you a quick question that comes to my mind and I'm listening to you because I know how the missions work as far as having companions. Were most of your companions from the States then or did you have any that were local from Portugal that actually spoke Portuguese as a native language? Yeah, my t- two months in, I was living with someone who didn't speak English from Cape Verde, Africa, okay. an island in Africa, okay. off the coast of Africa. Um, and then I also had another from Mozambique, and then another from, uh, let's see, yeah, from from Mozambique, and then the rest were from the states. Okay, so yeah, that's that's quite. I I've never heard of that that uh, a mission you know president leader would uh, just have you speak that local language because uh, that makes you really work on it because it's one thing to have conversational um, foreign languages but it's another to take something that's a written text that is spiritual and those types of things and speak that because there's just things that don't translate. Right. I mean, they just, things aren't. Yeah. So uh, it's quite an accomplishment, quite an accomplishment. It was cool. It, it was great to be able to see, Oh, you know, they send you to training to a training school basically for two months. And then within four months of being in the country, I was, you know, speaking quite well, but even within the third and fourth month, I was able to, get around and get along and understand a lot of things. So it's amazing how quickly you can learn when you immerse yourself. That's so good. All right. So we wrapped up your mission, got home. What was the next pivot? Multi-level marketing. Oh, Utah, the land of multi-level the land marketing. of multi-level marketing. <laughs> well, cause I had a friend that was making, you know, 10 grand a month or whatever. And actually I did have a friend that was making about $70,000 a month. He was really good. Wow. Um, now he's a professional speaker and, you know, he, he, he's, he's very, very good. He's good at whatever he does. Um, so I sold vitamins for 10 months. What I loved about it was the focus on self-development and the okay. focus on residual income yep. and that idea of, you know, you should control your income and you should create a business and not a job. So I ate all that up. It was awesome. Yeah. What I hated was I don't want to sell to my friends. Yeah. I also hate selling an overpriced product Yep. and I don't love this. I just didn't love the model. No, I'm with no. you on that. I'm with you on that. You know, I started my software career out in Salt Lake and uh, I worked for a company and we did business with all kinds of MLMs just because they're everywhere. So we yeah. did business with uh, New Skin and we did a Maluka and we did uh, Nature's uh, Way. Yeah. Yeah, I just all kinds of it. And we were, you know, back in systems accounting and things like that and stuff. And so if you're working in Utah, you know, there's so many of those out there. But I agree with you. I, you know, I was always recruited because I've always been a, you know, gregarious, you know, big personality type person, you know, talk to everybody, friends with everybody. But I, I just couldn't do it because I didn't want to sell stuff to my friends and, and neighbors and people I knew. I wanted those relationships separate than from business. And then the overpriced products, I couldn't get it. So I just, I just couldn't do it. Yeah. 
Couldn't well, I didn't. It's hard enough to build good relationships when you have something that you can sell to everybody. Hey, Rex, it's been great to meet you. Hey, maybe you should be a part of my downline. That's the one thing that I don't love about coaching. Yeah. Because you're building relationships. I hate having something to sell. When I sold bike parts, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you want to buy bike parts, whatever. You know, it wasn't, I couldn't meet customers all over the place. Right. So I loved not having anything to sell. I, I love not having thing to sell, things to sell to people. I'd rather just say, hey, I like you. I don't care. You can't make me a dime and I don't care. Right. You know, because I like you as a human and, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I honor, you know, your humanity and that's it. And I'm not treating you any differently because of something I can gain from you. That's like the highest level, right? We're always, yeah, sure. but that's what I want. Uh, that's the kind of person I want to be, you know? Yeah. And multi-level marketing would make that really hard. But so after that, I guess in high school, one thing I didn't mention is uh, because I didn't have this aspiration of what I was going to do after, I skipped my ACTs, you know, to, to go on a bike trip to California. So my friends and I got in a Greyhound bus, we rode to Santa Barbara, and we, we spent about, you know, 10 days riding down the coast to San Diego and skipped the ACT. And we decided when we got back from our missionary service, we would ride across the country. So sure. we got back in the next summer, we went down the short way. We rode from Canada to Mexico. And that's, um, so I left everything. I left my multi-level marketing. Um, I left the selling bike parts on eBay thing and spent six weeks riding down the coast. Nice. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful. I listened to a book, a book by Brian Tracy, Goals. Yep you know, multiple times. And I, I came back feeling, you know, the world is my oyster and this is sure. and I had a really strong impression that I should ditch multi-level marketing and start selling on eBay full time and include my dad do in that. I thought, you know, cause he had helped me take picture, you know, he was the digital photo guy. So he'd take, even before my missionary service, he would take pictures and post the things online for me. And mm -hmm. I would get a commission of, of what sold. Nice. He was mostly being helpful. Yes. Right? Mostly being um, dad. He's, he was being a dad and being supportive. It wasn't, you know, um, but we were doing great. You know, we were making good money. Um, and it was so much fun. We loved working together. We're so different too. He's like an accounting type person, you know, slow and steady, just, uh, you know, really competitive ath athlete actually, but pro professionally, that's what his thing was, was just more of an accountant. And I was more of the dreamer, like, Hey, you know, let me wait in line for an hour at the store and go and do a treasure hunt all day. Yep. And fine with that, we complimented each other really well. So I had this feeling, man, we really need to just partner somehow. So we talked and we decided that once he could pay, make three grand a month, he could quit his job and be full time. And, and within six months that happened. So in 2004, he, um, we started our company together with a user ID that was just Dale P majors, you know, and then later it switched to bike wagon. Um, oh, wow. we sold mostly bike parts. Right. And then that was a really cool 12 year journey where we worked together. Um, and then when we sold the company, he could retire and then, you know, I'm younger and wanted to still work. So um, but it was a really cool 12 years uh, working with him. So was that the um, company that you then retired from or did you do something else that you retired from? Yeah, that, that was the one. We grew it to about 10 million in revenue. Nice. Uh, had, we had, you know, about 16,000 bike parts in stock. We wow. went from my, you know, in high school, I would sell things off of my card table in my basement. Sure. You know, and then the garage and then a 1500 square foot warehouse, and then 3,000, 8,000. And eventually we had about a 25,000 square foot building. And that alone was really great. You know, we bought a, we bought a, a 25,000 square foot warehouse building in Salt Lake in 2010, and we we're able to sell it in 2020. Just good. We had really good market timing too. So yeah. you know, anybody that has a good business that they can, you know, require a lot of space for like, real estate can be a great wealth generator too. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Don't you love the internet? It is just so amazing. You know, you would have never had those types of opportunities if we didn't have it, you know, you know, no, ab absolutely not. It was, it was a, it was a life changing thing for, for all of us and just a fun, you know, a fun thing to be involved in. 
Yeah. Well, you know, you punch out at the age 32, that's too young. I mean, you, you know, you can't golf all the time with all that. I, I understand that. You can't just go fishing. And part of the problem with those are you don't have anybody to go with, right? Because wife, you know, your kids are busy or you know, kinds of stuff. Your friends are all working and stuff like that. So what'd you do? What was the next stop? I mean, you know, you punch out at 32. What do you think then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was hard because my whole goal, well, the whole goal was make enough money so I don't have to work and, sure. you know, don't have a mortgage and have some investments and whatever. Um, not a very great goal because it's a very, you know, it's just, it's, it's not ensure have freedom and whatever, but yeah, within a few weeks, even I really felt, you know, the draw to have a bigger goal and to have yeah. another goal and have something that. that me. So I, I spent about a year uh, getting clear, you know, immediately I started consulting because opportunities just came up. Hey, sure. can you talk to us about e-commerce. Sure. You know, why not? Yeah. You know? How much do you charge? I don't know, 100 bucks an hour, 200 bucks an hour, whatever. Like, I don't know. Um, but that, that was fun and it was, it, it made me feel a little useful. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted another goal. And what was interesting is when I looked back, I probably experienced the most joy in the first five, six years of my business. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and that's when I didn't have financial security. We weren't even, we were winning, but it wasn't like a guaranteed win. It was still maybe precarious, but, uh, it, I, I was relied on by other people. I had a, a lot of chances to be creative. I could use a lot of my skills. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a clear path for me to follow. So I've spent the last few years creating the same environment that I had in the first five years of my business that would allow me to be trusted and, and meet new people and exercise my skills and have a clear path. Um, and I, I just realized that it's so much less about money than we think and more about creating an environment that allows us to be fulfilled and, and add value into the world. Yeah. You know, I, I see this a lot in the people that I, I uh, interview. If you don't have purpose, then you're just punching a clock. You know, there's a million ways to make money. You know, whether you work at a corporation, a small company, um, you know, real estate, there's, a, there's just more ways than you can count to make money. So yeah. making money doesn't really make you happy. It, but when you people find a purpose, and I, and I've, if people listen to the episodes, there are people that I have interviewed that have been through amazing successful things, you know, amazing writing books, all that. But at the end of the day, if they don't have purpose, eh, that all those things are just sort of well, there's steps along the way, but it's not really um, something that gets them out of bed every day and gives them that deep satisfaction. Yep. And so, I mean, I completely understand that. I mean. When uh, I decided to bring back after coming off a of radio, after being dad coach for about 10 plus years, when I decided to bring this back, people looked at me like, well, why are you doing this? I was like, well, there's a purpose for what I'm doing. So what, what did you develop that uh, you've got this purpose and you've got this passion for that that's now making things like it was the first five years? Yeah. Well, good question. It's a, uh, um, you know, and it's still in the making. I, I came up with uh, kind of a life strategy, more of an emergent strategy that said, as long as I do these types of things, then th these are the things that make me happy. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, here are the things by doing this, I should be able to achieve these other things. Mm -hmm. um, and because I want to be like, I want to be able to invest in, you know, 50 companies and work with different entrepreneurs and be sure be a, you know, a guide, a mentor, or somebody that helps connect, you know, connect the missing pieces and, and help and support entrepreneurs. I think that, you know, it's hard to be an entrepreneur and I've been helped by several people um, in really meaningful ways that, you know, one, one mentor of mine, you know, uh, helped facilitate a transaction that we did that made us 300 grand in a certain year. And that was like most of our profit. You know, yeah. and we were a struggling little business that needed the help and guidance, you know, and, and a person with no real self-interest was able to just step in and help. You know, I want to be that kind of resource for other people. Um, so I want to invest in a lot of companies and we're, we're starting to do that. Um, yeah. I love coaching. I love coaching entrepreneurs and, and, you know, 
teaching content. It's just something that fills me up that, yep. uh, that helps me. Uh, I love building relationships. So my acronym is try, you know, tank, fill my tank, you know, spend life learning new things, experiencing, new, experiencing new things, you know, uh, learning new skills, language, you know, going on a seven day water fast just to see what it's like to not eat for seven days. You know, <laughs> or I'm on day two of sleeping on the ground. Cause I read something really funny about not about sleeping on the ground instead of in a bed. And I'm like, you know, I want to test that out. That's really interesting, you know? <laughs> but just all sorts of things. So if I look tired, then maybe it's because I didn't sleep all that great last night. Well, I'm sorry, Dale, but I'm not joining you on that safari. I am not going to sleep on the ground. So, um, you know, what's, what's that old thing? You know, that we, we both know tons of people who've been involved in scouting, right? Okay. Uh-huh. And I have a friend who did it for like 10 years and he was, compl- I was talking to him one day and he says, oh, I've never slept in a sleeping bag. I said, what do you mean? You've been in scouts forever. And he says, Keyword is slept in a sleeping bag. I've okay. been in a sleeping bag. So yeah. your idea of sleeping on the floor? No. See, but I'm going to spend two months on the floor this summer. So I may as well start practicing. Okay, we're, that's okay. We're camping for two months. Um, but anyways, whether it's that or whatever. And so fill my tank, you know, and then two is relationships. I love meeting new people. There's something yeah. magical that happens from meeting people because I can either help connect them or give something that was really cheap and easy for me to give, mm-hmm. but impactful for the other person. You know, right. I, I'm, I met with an old friend four years ago who just joined one of my coaching programs and said, Dale, that lunch that we went on, you know, that day, whenever, like, you probably don't remember what you said, but I remember I was like, oh, I was very long winded that day. It was, I was like flowing and I, and I spoke 90% of the time, mm-hmm. you know, and, and which isn't typical. I talk a lot, but I'm, I'm usually, you know, but I remember, and he said, Dale, I was just so helpful. And I made so many changes and, you know, what are you doing now? I want to work with you more. Sign me up. Yeah. You know, um, just an interesting thing, easy for me to give and, but, you know, meaningful for somebody else. So I thought, you know, relationships need to be a part of my life. I need to put myself in a situation where I'm just always meeting people. Um, and then, the other inspire other people. And that's what I do through the content and then invest. And that's kind of like, you know, what I want to do, you know, longer, longer term. And I'm doing a little bit of that now we bought a company, you know, last year, um, my partners and I, but I spend most of my time doing that. Mm-hmm. And, and what's interesting, once I started doing those things, then the business has started forming. So sure. I have a coaching company now called venture anyway. And that is a, for two years, it was mastermind groups that were four months long. Mm-hmm. Um, I hated having something to sell. We're like, I'm going to sell this to you. And then when you're done, we're done. And I have yeah. no other, you know, thing. I just changed it to one year because I, you know, people wanted more support. And I think that I can deliver good value for a year. Okay. Uh, so real quick. So those might be following along. What's the website for your business? It's a, uh, you know, the, I have a free training at go.ventureanyway.com. Okay. Go.ventureanyway.com. Okay. And the website is just ventureanyway.com. Okay. Um, and, and that's what it is. I've loved that. That's been, uh, really meaningful and I don't do one-on-one coaching Mm -hmm. only scheduled group calls. So, you know, it allows me to go on a bike tour with my family for two months. Yep. But still, I will get on a call for an hour every other week with my group. Yeah. We're gonna talk. I have other people that support me, though, that can, that can be moderators as well. And I'm really just focused on getting great people together that are focused on building other people up. Wow. Sounds like fun, something to be a, uh, a part of. So you have to tell me, my mind is wondering, where are the eight of you going on this next bike? Yeah, bike so uh, Mount Rushmore. Nice. In the Black Hills in South Dakota, there's a path called the, it's the Mickelson Trail, and it goes through the Black Hills for about 120 miles. You, you're welcome to join us, Rex, for part of that. I've had a few <laughs> people join me there. It's amazing. And you just have to keep up with my eight-year-old. Okay. Um, it will take five days. And then we're going to take the trailer and drive to a uh, Philadelphia area. Okay and ride on the Great Allegheny Passage Trail. All right. Yep. And the C&O Canal. Okay. And then we'll go to the Erie Canal. And each of those is about 350 mile 
paths, each of those. So we'll do about 800 miles this summer. Nice. And nice. then we'll then we'll drive down to Georgia to spend some time with my wife's family and then spend a week in Destin and then drive home, Destin, Florida, and then we'll drive home. Nice. What a great trip. Fantastic. You're, that'll be something your kids will remember forever, you know, those types of trips. We've done it. We've done, we've gone to France and Germany a few times where we've spent two months along river paths there. Mm -hmm. it's really, it's just, it's magical. It's, it's amazing to get so unplugged that you forget what you do professionally and just to see what you think, you know, as far as yeah. life alignment to say, Oh, you know, I, I do love doing that. And I want to do more of that. Oh, I want to do a lot less of that. Yeah. And each one of those days you're making up the day every day. It's, there's no schedule as far as we're having a meeting at seven and this at nine. And just, you're getting up at six 30 and you're out by eight 30. Then you just start writing. Yes. That's fab fabulous. So, uh, I thank you for coming on today and sharing what you're up to. I think it's really interesting. And I know a lot of people will probably reach out to you and talk to you about uh, your next venture as, as you know, you're helping people grow and coach and those things. I think that's awesome. So I have one last question for you, Dale, that I ask all of my uh, guests that come on the show. There is uh, the concept of a bucket list. Now I have interviewed the bucket list guy, thebucketlist.com bucketlistguy.com. Okay. His name is Trav Bell. He's down in Australia. One of the most interesting people I've ever met because he talks about living a purposeful life. Well, as you know, there is a, uh, and in fact, if people want to listen to the interview, it's a hoot. He's a character. It's, it's episode number 60, Trav Bell, bucket list guy. Anyway, there's always an opposite of everything in the universe, right? So there's a list um, that's opposite of a bucket list. You know, the things we don't have any interest of. Okay. Now that list rhymes with bucket and starts with an F, but this is a family show. So we'd never say that, but what might be an item or two that might be on Dale's F it list? Now, I think this could be a very interesting answer because you're not a, you're, you're not a conventional guy. You do a lot of interesting things. Now I'll, I'll prime the pump here a little bit. Uh -huh. I will never ever again do a Lakota Sioux sweat lodge. The concept of excessive heat, excessive humidity, excessive drumming and chanting all together. No, not going to do that again. Uh, I won't have a whole collection of snakes for pets. Not going to have, that's not going to happen. Not going to eat sardines. So um, with some thoughts in mind, what might be on Dale's effort list? Uh, so, and I'll tell you what this, Dale, the next time someone talks about a bucket list, you're going to remember this conversation. Okay. So what might be on a list of something you're never going to do or have no interest? Oh, wow. I haven't spent any time thinking about what I don't want to do. Um, let's see. It's always a great question because you've, you've taught gonna, us. You know, yeah, I guess. What do I never want to do? There's got to be an experience or two that have been absolutely miserable, right? Yeah, go back to, I never want to go back to uh, junior high. No, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I can't think of anything entertaining. I'm like, man, I never want to go back to eating like, you know, garbage again. Right. Um, or you probably wouldn't want to have to lose seven pounds in a day. That might be an idea, right? Yeah, but I, I kind of enjoyed the, I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. With <laughs> So that's, but yes, you know, wouldn't want to have to go and lose seven pounds in a day again. I never want to have to, uh, yeah, I won't be returning to under 4% body fat in my life. Okay. You know, no, that's, that's not healthy. My, you know, um, the, uh, that's an interesting question. I feel bad that I won't be able to give you guys any good answers to no, that. No, those are great I'm answers. Gonna have, I'm probably going to have a few though, after this show, I'll be like, well, oh, absolutely. Well, well, I never want to do that. Huh. Yeah, well, you know, when you think about it this way, I'm, le I'm leaving you a gift. That, so the next time ever anybody ever comes up with that term, you're going to go, wait a minute. I can tell you some things also that I don't ever want to do. So Yes. Uh, anyway. Well, Got it's it. been a pleasure to meet you today and have you on the show. Tell your story. Yeah. It's great to see that when someone punches out, uh, that they're not just off playing golf and fishing and goofing around, that you've uh, dug a little deeper that you decided to go find something that gave you more meaning, more happiness. And that's, that's something to be applauded. And again, 
as I always say, success doesn't fall out of the sky. And you have an incredible um, track record of making things happen. And it's great to see someone who's doing something different than just, you know, the grind. So thanks for coming on. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that'll be a wrap for this day's uh, show. We want to thank uh, Dale for coming on. Please don't forget to stop by his website. And then also please do stop by the show website because his profile and bio is out there along with all of our guests. So you can always learn more. And then so until next time, I just have the three things that I say at the end of every episode. Be safe, but be bold and make it a great day.